him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling over half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like Bianca Belair, huh? Best podcast, fuck shit in the air, huh? From the rings and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling over half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Wrestling Wrap Up Podcast. I'm your host, Mari Fourth, and with me, as always, my co host, my tag team partner, the Jay Uso to my Jimmy Uso, Mr. Matt Scott. Matt, how's it going? Uh, Mari, 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 Mari. I don't appreciate that microaggression from you calling me the Jay Uso, but. Mm-hmm. That was not a microaggression. He works hard. He works hard. <laughs> <laughs> he has an attitude, but he works hard, and we appreciate that about him. Damn. Yeah, Jey Uso might be the sensible twin, depending on how this storyline shakes out. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. Wow. Matt, how are you doing? Are you are you <laughs> ready for the holidays? Uh, holla, holla, holidays. That's what's all about. Just me getting ready to do the things to uh, eat food to Thanksgiving it up. You know how it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm in New Jersey, in New Jersey, visiting yeah. the family. Exactly. Um, I just got here yesterday, and otherwise, I would have gone to AEW this past weekend in Newark, but you know what? It's all good. It's all good. I'm fine. I'm not mad. How's how's the holla holla holla? Uh, shout out to Teddy Long. Uh, how's the holla holla holiday <laughs> prep going for you? Holidays are going good. I am in Georgia, so the wrestling wrap up is on the road uh, this Ooh. week, and uh, we will be doing our uh, Survivor Series War Games preview uh, very quickly, very succinctly. Um, So I'm good. I'm here. I'm ready to get back to the holidays. So let's start off. Uh, No real news. Let's just talk a little bit about, I just have to give you your flowers really about AEW Full Gear. If you listen to our last podcast, we did a Full Gear like uh, preview predictions. It was more predictions since it dropped the same day as opposed to like details preview. (laughs) Right, it dropped, it dropped the day after, whatever. It's a, it was our predictions podcast. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Listen to how right we were slash how wrong we were. So, okay, we um, were very right. Let me be clear. We were very right. True. Well, actually, wait, really no, that's right. not true. I was very right. Well, in uh, with one match. So uh, Matt sure. was very right in the MJF and uh, Moxley match. I think we all said MJF should win, that it was his time, like they needed to put the belt mm-hmm. on him. We all agreed to that. Matt was the person who included that he thought that William, oh, sorry, Stephen Regal <laughs> would, uh, is that how, what, what is his name over there? <laughs> He goes, he goes, I love how you got that's super his real official. Name. Yeah, I think that's his real name slash his WCW name. No, 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 that's you not his me. real name. <laughs> Whatever. His real William name Regal is Darren, Darren Darren Kenneth Darren Kenneth Matthews. He should <laughs> but change William Regal. Regal yes. William Regal. He should yeah, go by it... Stephen some months. Go by William other months. So yeah. He helped MJF win by sliding the brass knucks to MJF. I feel like it was right. it was right there Luke. though. It was like it was right there. Like it made yeah. sense for it to happen, especially with Moxley out on vacation. And William Regal's so good. Like, mm-hmm. you know, just put him in something spicy. And I like yeah. I like him with MJF. Yeah, I do too. The biggest thing is that a lot of us are just wondering what's going to happen with the Blackpool Combat Club. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the biggest thing. And that's what we talked about on our um, on our uh, predictions podcast. So go check that's that out. True. We had an amazing guest, Lo, from the Wrestling Wind mm-hmm. Down. Um, so it was really fun doing the predictions with you guys. We also got, uh, well, I don't even know. Like, we got the Jade Cargill. You got the Jade Cargill prediction right? Jade course, retained. Well, I think uh, yeah. I... Oh yeah, no, that was weird. Like I it's weird that I'm the only one that predicted Jade to win there, but I think it it kind of speaks yeah. to how 
it is kind of to a point where some might say it's getting stale. I wouldn't. I like mm-hmm. to see her undefeated. But mm-hmm. yeah, she she retained. So Jade lives to fight another, fight day. another day. I guess yeah. 42 and 0 at this point in her career, which is very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? The, another women's match I would just point to, Jamie Hayter did defeat Tony Storm, which was the other prediction where I was like, damn. I like that they did it. I'm not that. Mm-hmm. I haven't. Uh, there's always been something with Tony Storm where I'm like, I like you, but there's something missing here, and I'm not sure what it is. And so that was just some of the magic that yeah. we got. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm shocked, but we'll see what happens. Like, is Thunder Rosa coming back anytime soon? Then you know what I'm saying. Does this mean that Thunder Rosa might not be coming back soon? Well, I mean, I I, uh, to me, this says also like AEW needs to constantly switch things up. Like, if they're gonna have interim champions, it can't always be a situation where the champ comes back or the yeah, like the main champ comes back and then takes on the interim champ. You know, sometimes they mix it up. Sometimes the person who's interim champ will change over the course of their timeout. So mm-hmm. we'll see. I mean, and Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa could still feud each other. Thunder Rosa could still end up feuding with Jamie Hader, but I really think they're going to do something with Jamie Hader and Britt Baker opposite of Soraya, who we saw return and mm-hmm. I was going to say survive. Not to get defeated. dark, but I know <laughs> she returned and she did defeat uh, Doctor Britt Baker, D M D. So you know it was a thing. She did a thing. A thing. Did so, yeah. yeah yeah. And by the way, like I think I, I think the match. Sorry, the match card overall was really strong and um, lots of fun moments. Like this did not drag on for too long. Everyone put on good performances. Uh, the elite lost to death triangle which was also surprising like i just felt like it was it felt fresh felt fresh yeah it's gonna be really interesting some of the fallout from this 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 match card because it, i i feel like it was it was some stuff that was unpredictable in a good way and so now you're kind of you're kind of see like okay so what's the logical next steps for like where are we taking these storylines from here on out so um you know good job on the full gear card everybody over there at aew um but Again, if you want to go listen to our predictions, just go check that out. It was a great, great podcast. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, also feel free to send any um, long form questions to wrestling at robhasawebsite.com. We'll answer you and maybe read it here on the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at wrestling rehab up on Twitter. Um, Anytime is a great time to join the patron group. Uh, the RHAP patron group, group by going to www.patreon.com slash RHAP to join the pa- the patron group where you can get exclusive access access to um, uh, exclusive podcasts, our face, our, our RHAP Facebook group, uh, our uh, like RHAP community. Um, of course, you don't have to be a patron to do to uh, join the job has a squad cast of Facebook group, which is our unofficial official Facebook group of the wrestling room hop up. That's where we get all of our questions. That's where we chat with everybody. It's such a fun place to be. Shout out to everybody at the job has a squad cast Facebook group. Love you guys and come and join the fun. Are you already subscribed to our podcast feed? If mm-hmm. not, why not? <laughs> go to rob has a website.com slash wrestling feed to subscribe please subscribe and while you're there you know rate give us five stars five stars five stars five stars five stars five stars one more <laughs> <laughs> and leave a great review for me and matt <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like for me too please please leave that review yes for both of us <laughs> and then uh, finally hopefully you're looking at our beautiful faces here on youtube where we bring up uh pictures of the wrestlers what we're talking about is great we we love having this video podcast you can go to youtube go to the rob has a podcast youtube page search wrestling wrap up and we're right there there's a the whole playlist for just our video podcast so definitely go check us out go look at our faces we don't have a guest today um, but look at our wonderful guest faces. Uh, 
but that's it let's <laughs> yeah and honestly just like to build on that no if like that's more of what you're, you're into some people are more into the audio some people just want to watch us talk without listening to us so go to youtube mute you can hit the little mute button and just look at us having a great time here um but also shout out mari you mentioned the patreon just want to give a special shout out to uh frequent past well frequent guest of this podcast stan c who mm -hmm. was um on some patron exclusive content for rhap survivor academy talking about his views on survivor very fun episode and if you love stan on here if you even loved him on pod friends with me you could check him out on uh survivor academy behind that patron uh patron paywall, paywall. thing mm -hmm. yeah yep. that's mm -hmm. it there we go awesome, awesome. all right let's take Let's take a quick break and we'll be back with the highlights of the week. Okay, so this week, like we said, we're just going to get into the Survivor Series War Games preview. Um, I'm going to uh, say uh, apologies in advance because I will probably call this thing uh, SummerSlam at least eight times. I always, <laughs> me, I always say Survi Survivor Series and SummerSlam like interchangeably. <laughs> Like all the time, it's too many S's. It have you done that on here a lot? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> plenty of times. It's the type of thing that, like, it's so understandable that I feel like I barely even hear it. I'm just like, yep, yeah, same. It is summers. I mean, it's the S's too. It's the S's. So I might Human just call it War Games from here on now because it is Survivor Series War Games. As Matt pulled up that that very nice graphic there. Now you're just um, making things. You're just like, let me just change the whole name of the pay per view. It's all good. I'm, that's what <laughs> it's called. It um, is. And honestly, War Games is so much more exciting than Survivor so cool. Series. Like when I think of War Games, I think of action. When I think of Survivor Series, I think of old people. Um, yeah. standing no. on the on the ring apron waiting to be tagged in well uh this week of course like every week all of the highlights that we'll be talking about can be found in a very handy playlist that'll be attached in our show notes and show descriptions both wherever you listen to your podcast and wherever you watch us on youtube um Y'all, this this might be quick. I'm not gonna lie. Only because there's only five matches announced as of today. <laughs> We're recording on Wednesday because we do normally like to get our preview podcast out a few days in advance <laughs> before the event. Um, Matt, what do you got to say? Uh, no, I just laugh because you're so honest, Mari. But in my head, like I'm also like such a spin artist where I'm like, oh no, we are like right now. Just in case you're listening, normally. We record Wednesday preview predictions. Wednesdays at like 8, 9 p.m. We're doing it mm -hmm. right now at like 3.30 p.m. for yeah. you all <laughs> just to get – see, and this is the spin. Like my thing is, Mari, we're doing this for the people. Mm -hmm. This is for, for the, the people. people. Yeah. And we also will keep it mm -hmm. short because we know you want to enjoy your families, the festivities. We just want to keep exactly. it bite-sized. This will be a five-hour podcast, won't it, Mari? It will not be. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but mostly because there's literally only five matches right now. Announced as of Wednesday, 4 o'clock p.m. There's only five matches announced. Um, I, I will, we'll, Maybe we'll talk about it. If maybe they'll put some more matches at the end of it. But right now there's only five matches. And I'll some of them it. there's not too much to say. So... <laughs> Yeah. No complaints. No Let's complaints. get into our uh, none at all. Let's get into the main one. The first one is the men's war game match. It's the bloodline, which is Roman Reigns, Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, Sami Zayn, and Solo Sokoa versus the brawling brutes, Sheamus, Butch, Ridge Holland, and Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens in a war games match um like i'm excited about this but i'm also like not excited about this match. do you uh, do you want to break that down talk about your complicated feelings <laughs> around this this is like wrestling therapy yes so i am excited to see a bloodline the bloodline in a war games match i am excited to see the dynamics between like jimmy and sammy in the match. I'm excited to see the dynamics of the bloodline as a whole in the match, because I feel like there's a lot of inner storytelling within them 
that's mm-hmm. like I can't wait to see it unfold. Now I them pl- going up against the brawling brutes, I don't necessarily care. So like, ask me, like yeah. I, I it's so, it's so hard for me because it makes sense if you, if you check our highlights playlist, there's like a whole like they did the highlights of why the Usos are facing the brawling brutes and how the Usos took out Sheamus at one point, you know, and how how they've been basically fighting for months now, like interchangeably whatever whatever um and then drew drew comes in which again that makes sense it's another opponent from roman's sure. past another person that was screwed out of the title by the bloodline and um the honestly i'm more fascinated by drew and who was announced last friday which is kevin owens so excited to see mm-hmm. him on that side, Kevin Owens is amazing. He always brings it to Roman. Him and Roman's matches are always so freaking good. Yeah. So I'm more excited about the two of them than the Brawling Brutes. I it, I know it's so unfair. Like, I know it's so unfair. But I just cannot be happy for Ridge. And I cannot look at him without thinking about, like, him breaking Big E's neck. And that's not oh. fair because things uh. happen in wrestling. And you should not hold like competitors at fault for stuff, but it's just really hard to see them being pushed when like we just saw the new day lose to the bloodline. Big E is still out. It's been over a year now. We don't know when he's coming back. And it's just that it's just, you know, so the brawling brutes don't normally do it for me, but the upside is Pete Dunn has been in at least, I think, two of these War Games matches, if I remember correctly. At least one, maybe two. Sure. And that's going to be good. Like, he's going to definitely bring some experience to that that match. So, mm-hmm. I know overall, I know it's going to be a good match. But if the Bloodline don't win here, then what are we, like, doing? You know? <laughs> well, like, I, I mean... Don't... Yeah, I'm with you. Like, we could further the story of the Bloodline by having them lose to the... True other people um i'm just looking at it like it's drew it's ko it's sheamus and then the uh the the uh butch aka former pete dunn and the other one ridge holland Holland. and the thing is like just to go back to something you said i don't think it's unfair that we think of the biggie injury every time Mm -hmm. that we see him mostly because I mean, what else are you going to really think of with Ridge Holland? And no, no, I mean, well, I was going to say no shade, but that was kind of shady. So I'm going to own it. But it's just like that happens. I mean, it's kind of like the thing. I mean, we just saw Soraya return and Mm -hmm. I've heard Sasha Banks and her Sasha's name come up time and time again in relation to that, even though like accents happen and everyone will say that it it's okay to think of the person in relation to the injury it's just like things happen right like we're not it's not an indictment on him as a performer things happen and i'm sure he feels worse about it than most people so um you know it is what it is but you know i'm with you i like if we're not given the bloodline the win here then like this is the bloodline story whether or not they win so maybe it's like a miscommunication Mm -hmm. that results in sammy or sorry in well yeah maybe it's a miscommunication involving sammy and jay or you know something like that that leads them losing or they win and i think no matter what it's the bloodline story so it would be kind of weird to have the other it's funny because i just keep thinking of them as the others like they're not even yeah they're mostly the brawling brutes but like not even fully the brawling brutes so like the others Mm -hmm. you know they're coming for the the win but like it's just not their time to be featured like how awkward is it to be standing up at the end raising your hands as the faces Mm -hmm. when on the other side like the story's not even about you it's about them so i see the bloodline winning this one mari like it just doesn't make sense to me that this is just a strange match yeah i i agree i think this is going to be pretty straightforward i think the bloodline should win they should continue their dominance um yeah, I'm th- I'm just thinking of ways. I, I because I think there's gonna be shenanigans in the women's match. I don't think they'll put shenanigans in the men's match. So um yeah, I I I, I think the bloodline's gonna win. I don't think there's any need for the other people to win. 
Yeah. This is not Tony to Khan. It's not Tony Khan. Like, that's my <laughs> thing. Like, AEW, they showed with, like, the Elite versus Death Triangle just a couple days ago. You have the Elite returning. You're Everyone's thinking, oh, the Elite's going to win the trios championships. And then they don't. And yet there's, like, a best of seven series happening now for those mm. championships. So that's a whole thing. But WWE is not Ooh. in the business of unpredictability. They are not in the business of un unpredictability. And so... Sorry, Seamus, KO, Drew, uh -huh. other one, Pete Dunn slash Butch. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not, this is not your time. So go and eat your Cheerios, as Mari would say to her son. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that's. Honestly, I'm just like, that's it. Honestly, that, yeah, that is truly no it. Yeah. Because it, it feels like it feels like I've been so wrapped up in literally the bloodline storyline that when Seamus and all of them came back and they're like, Oh, we're setting up for a war game. So I was like, why? Because I because I've just been thinking of, of the bloodlines feud within the feud to mm -hmm. forget that they were even kind of feuding with the other people. So it's just very interesting. We'll see where it goes and we'll see. I if mean <sighs> Mari, it, the feud is interesting, but this match is not interesting. Right, 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 right. I mean, but Oof. it's war game, so no matter what, it's gonna be. I like. I think it's gonna be a good match, no matter what. It's war. It's it's war games. Like, Could I? I have a question about this though. Not to like um do, spend too much time with this, but you know, war games. Right, we get mm -hmm. it. It's war games. But mm -hmm. do is there another men's war games match that would be more interesting on the card? Like to me, maybe to answer my question already, like something involving the judgment day feud would be a little bit more heated, but I just feel like the men aren't as hot as the women right now in terms of a five on five type of situation. Yeah. I'm actually like surprised prize like the the oc judgment day match i really wish well, we're getting ahead but instead of it being aj styles versus finn balor i wish they would have just made that a um like a classic survivor series match to be quite honest even if it's three on three i i, I would have i think i would have preferred that mm -hmm. um i'm actually like i'm hoping that they they add like a traditional survivor series match because there's there's a whole bunch of women who are sitting in the back doing nothing you know the war mm -hmm. the women's war game match is basically all raw women not basically right now it's all the raw women which are is amazing because all the raw women are hot right now um but that means a whole roster of, of smackdown stars aren't doing anything yeah and it kind of feels like this the same for well the and it, it's kind of like the opposite for the men like all of the the men's uh war game is all of the smackdown men so like that's the it's very interesting in that that way yeah yeah we you know did. you bring up a good point though it is kind of funny that they just threw out the survivor series Brand supremacy yeah mm -hmm. they threw that out but and you know it's nice i mean i'm not saying we need that and actually i'm not even saying we want that but right. it would be good to have it would be I just think it'd be nice to have like the like one at least one traditional Survivor Series match just because yeah. I can't think of the last time that we had a Survivor I mean maybe we've never had a Survivor Series where that wasn't in the cards. I get that War Games is very similar but mm -hmm. it's diff it's a different match. Like what they did with the War Games they should have done they should do a a, a Survivor Series match like like Team Bianca versus Team Bailey, like get like find people who are who will find people to be on their team, doesn't matter which brand, and then do a traditional survivor series with them. Like that's something I wish they would have done, but it's whatever. Yeah. So I think we we both um agree that the bloodline here is gonna take it. Mm -hmm. Next up, so let's deep let's uh dive a little bit into this women's <laughs> this women's match. Um, we got Bianca Belair. Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Mia Yim, and a woman who will be announced on SmackDown yeah. versus Damage Control, which consists of Bailey, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. So very interesting here, right? Mm -hmm. About two weeks ago, a little less than two weeks ago, we made our predictions for who we think that final person is going to be or the, like the last two yeah. people are going to be. Um, 
So there's been a lot of speculation since. I mean, even just to to maybe start there because you okay. mentioned it. Like we were talking about it being Candice LeRae, and mm -hmm. I think that we probably talked about our predictions for the war games, the women's war games match like a month and a half ago, even. <laughs> so we'd been talking about it and Candace LeRae makes a lot of sense. Um, and then yeah, I was thinking yeah. like, maybe it's Dana Brooke. Cause she's just a little pissed about the 24 seven championship still, but see now mm -hmm. the name, <sighs> it's just weird because Number one, we're not going to get a surprise return at the at Survivor Series with the person. So that's interesting that they're not deciding to just have them come out. I just and, and there I feel like there are more options for who it could be like, could it be Becky? Could it be Charlotte? Could it be mm -hmm. um, like Becky, Charlotte? Uh, could it be Candice LeRae? Could it be Dana Brooke? Who knows? I probably miss Sasha, Naomi, like who? The list goes on and mm -hmm. on. And so that's the cool thing about it. I, I just don't get why they're revealing it on SmackDown. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, guesses. So m I thought it was going to be Candice LeRae. I thought you add Candice LeRae. It makes sense because she's, she's been a part of the storyline. Um, she's been in war games. But if it was Candice LeRae, I feel like they would have announced that on Raw. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like they would have just given that to us already, you know? So the announcement coming on SmackDown is, you know, it's a it's a ratings grab, definitely, because I, I tuned into Raw today, and when they were like, oh, find out who that fifth woman is on SmackDown, I was like, boo. <laughs> like, I was mad. I was like, dang it. Like, I wanted to know so that we could, like, podcast about it. Um, mm -hmm. But they are like, nope. Find out on SmackDown. And so, but now, so Charlotte's been posting again. Like she came out the woodwork. And oh. I think it could be Charlotte. I, I I do think it could be Charlotte. Um no. does it make sense? No. No. Mm, no, not really. But like storyline-wise, no. <laughs> not at all. Uh, but okay so let's 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 kind of talk this out right using different people let's start with charlotte since we're already on the, that course so say charlotte is the fifth in bianca's uh team mm -hmm. what's the justification literally you want to know what the justification is Mm -hmm. Like yeah, like what? Because she... they they've done a really good job of giving everybody a reason for why they're on each team. They've really fleshed that out really well. She is a flair. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Storyline wise, so like my thought process is maybe do you have Bianca like oh we I wanted to bring the big guns you know like or do you have like charlotte come out and be like something to the effect of because damage control's whole thing is like oh it's people who are forgotten like how could anybody forget you come join us we'll show them we'll rage against the machine technically charlotte's mm -hmm. kind of the machine so like <laughs> the charlotte be like well i'm here to keep my foot on all y'all necks <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad y'all in y'all place that's so sad i mean like, <laughs> corporate bianca being like let's get the most corporate woman we can on our team to really hold the hold them that like charlotte flair is basically capitalism and <laughs> i don't think bianca's <laughs> trying to push that forward yeah uh, like I like I just want to know the justification. I, I if you're gonna put her on the team, fine, it's cool, it's whatever. But you've like we've systematically said this is why this person is on the team. This is why Mia's like, no, I'm on their their team because I like them. And Ray is like, well, if Mia's on that team, well, I'm on your team. Like, mm -hmm. Y'all got a problem with that? Like, mm -hmm. so give me some good justification. Um, because other than that, it just doesn't technically make sense storyline wise. Now, if you go with Candice LeRae. 
That would be cute. That would be easy. That would be simple. Um, Something you don't truly have to explain. Will it be a letdown? Maybe to some people, but not to me. You know, I I, I like Candice LeRae. I think that could be really good. That's a, that as like another high flyer, another person who's willing to take bumps on on Bianca's team. Um, and a war because games if Charlotte is on that team, Charlotte and Alexa don't take bumps. Like, yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> like. It doesn't Mm-mm. happen. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like beyond all that, it's interesting. So there's a lot that uh, there's a lot that you could say for like how they're rolling it out. So for me, I just think it's interesting that they are announcing on Friday. So why are they announcing Friday? Well, it's weird because Candice is on Raw also. So you're just going to have all these Raw women fighting on SmackDown. But then again, maybe it's like, oh, we want to have her come out because then it won't be people won't be let down on the night of the show they'll they'll, they'll have some time mm. to adjust or maybe it's smackdown because you're gonna have charlotte return and she's gonna be on smackdown but in this match so i don't really know but oh, i just would i'd mm-hmm. like for it to be candace LeRae. i would like for it to be candace mm-hmm. You know, I would also like for it to be Becky. I don't know what Becky's doing. Oh, I, I know she likes to yeah. time off. She can, Becky... she can take as much time off as she wants to. I'm still cool with that. Uh, yeah, but she's been really She also a lot. has history. Yeah, she has history with damage control. So that would make sense. Like they kayfabe injured her um, for her to be gone. So that would make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sense to me, um, too. That'd be cool. That'd be fire. Yeah. I'd be down with that. I know. I mean, and either I way, don't... I'm thinking you you have to reintroduce them. Yeah. I I like. I think you have to reintroduce Charlotte and Becky because I don't think you get you wait for Rumble for them too. Like, if yeah. uh, fingers crossed, if we do get a Sasha and Naomi return at the Rumble, are we are we also getting a Charlotte and Becky return at the Rumble? That'd be like so much. That'd be a lot of surprises at the Rumble to me. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I just but don't I know think, what I want. I don't know what I want I, anymore. I think you want all, you, because the the good thing about the rumble is yes, you want surprises, you want surprise yeah. guests, you want older people, you want newer people, you want all of those surprises, but you yeah. also want storylines going into the rumble. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you want smaller storylines to like build up so you can know like who to watch. So if some of your top stars are just waiting to the rumble to uh, pop up, mm-hmm. you know, it's fun. It'll be like you'll they'll get pops, but what am I what what will be the road that's paved to the rumble? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and also I have no interest in a face Charlotte Flair in on that road to the rumble. So it, you know, there's a world where we mm. see Charlotte teaming up with like Shotzi in the future against the Ronda, whatever Ronda oh. Shayna kind of situation or whatever. And it's just like, I just don't have any interest in Charlotte Flair on a face team. And then the other thing is that Becky would be great. You know, Becky coming mm-hmm. back here could make sense, whatever, you know. I think that one makes a lot of sense. But for me, I'm just, I'd be disappointed if Candice LeRae isn't here because there's a built in story. And I think that War Games could be a good chance for her to get over. And she's not injured. So what's the problem? You know, what's going on? Yeah. Yep. So we will see on Friday who that extra person is. I'm excited. No matter what, I'm excited because I, I, this is the War Games match. I will be watching the women's War Games matches and NXT have always been so good. I mean, the NXT War Games matches have been good both mm-hmm. genders, but like I, the women's ones have really been just so amazing. We talked about how many of them have, have been, have already participated in those matches. So I am like super excited to see that, that, uh, that match. So, but I think there's going to be shenanigans. So we're moving from mm-hmm. who's the fifth partner to who shall win and, and what do we think is going to happen. So my thing is, do we think that we'll get a straight up war games match? Because like we like we mentioned, like the NXT war games match, 
infamously Dakota Kai like turned heel on in one of them, right? Mm-hmm. So I could kind of see like a callback to that in this match, but I'm looking more at we've been seeing Alexa Bliss and these fiend symbols flashing when she's on the screen. Do we get like a possession or something and Alexa ends up costing her team or something? <laughs> you know? I mean, Mari, the possession thing, I don't know if that was like really, I'm thinking about The Fiend and I'm thinking about Mm -hmm. the Bray Wyatt situation. I just feel like possession is a little bit strong, you know, like (laughs) they wouldn't go all the way to full on possession, like demon murder, you know, that might be what happens. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know if we'll get anything really, like to me, it's so that story with Alexa is strange. I don't want it to affect the rest of the women's storyline. Like maybe she disappears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like maybe something happened and she's just like gone. Like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I feel do you feel shenanigans here? Because I feel like damage control should win this. I think damage control should win this. I think they have the capacity to win this, but I feel like there's gonna be some sort of shenanigans. 100 percent 100 percent agree. I want shenanigans. I want damage control winning mm-hmm. this. I feel like the chaos that a war games match is naturally equipped with is yeah. very much a fit mm-hmm. for damage control and Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley. Like this is their match to win. Right. And then the Alexa mm-hmm. thing. And I mean, this is why I think it's important that they announce whoever it is to uh, like partner, on, yeah. on Friday, because then it, mm-hmm. it softens the blow a little bit. And it's like, okay, that person came back to, to support Bianca and team, but they lost. And so, you know, I'm with you. I, I, and if I had to put on prediction behind anyone, it's the damage control Nikki Cross Ray Ripley team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think they deserve, I think they should win it. They've been taking a lot of losses lately, even though they're the, the, the women's tag champions right now, it feels like they've been losing a lot, but then again, Rhea did just beat Asuka on raw. So we know that damage control will start with the advantage. They'll get that two-on-one advantage in war games, um, which honestly should always just just automatically give it to the heel team. It's just so much better when the heel team gets that advantage mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> because they really like make the most of it. So just yeah. as soon as they announced this match, I was like, okay, so Rhea has to win this match because it's just so much better. It's just so much better when the when the heels have that advantage. Yeah. Um, I think the one time that they did it in NXT when the bad when the good guys had the advantage, one of the bad guys locked their cage so that they couldn't take like they couldn't send a person in to actually take the advantage. It was something like Love that. Love to see it. Funny. Love to see yeah. it. Yes. Um so either way, I think we both think here that we we um we should get a damage control and Rhea and Nikki Cross victory here. Mm-hmm. I love that they incorporated the Mia Yim Rhea Ripley feud here, even though it's like a, maybe like a two to three week feud that it feels like it slots perfectly in with this team, these teams. Yeah. Side note, by the way, um, the Mia Yim, Mi Chin thing, like them calling her oh, Mi Chin yeah. for a little, and it seemed like they were changing that to her name. I read that they were actually changing that to her name and then they decided not to. So, Oh, that's uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But yeah, it's, I'm glad they did not change her name, even though they were very committed thought, to they, calling they her. What was it? Was it? Well, yeah. Calling basically calling her crazy. Um, crazy. Uh, yeah. Cra- crazy just, in Korean. Yeah. Which I'm just like, it's fine if she's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, so I heard that line, like, a few times. I thought it was just throwaway, but, okay. They were saying it way too much. Me Chen. It's not that bad. No, but her name is Mia Yim. Mia Yim, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, let's just keep her name. We know, is it Mi Chen? I I would take Mi Chen over Butch any day. I I kind of feel like, I'm not gonna lie. Mm, You mean, well... (laughs) You mean them so, calling Mia Yim Mi Chin versus them calling Mia Yim Butch? 
<laughs> them calling I'll anybody take bush. <laughs> yeah, no, I just stick with Mia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm excited. That's that's probably gonna be the. Of course, if y'all been here, if y'all been listening, that's probably gonna be our match of the night, unless like something crazy happens. Yeah, not that, not the next one that we talk about. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, let's get into it. So the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Ronda Rousey, the current champ, versus Shotzi Blackheart, but they just calling her Shotzi now. Who cares? Who cares? I do. I do. Okay. I do. I just Take don't want it to be long. I just want it to be a short one, get in and out. That's what I care about. Shotzi's not winning this. Shotzi's of not winning not. this. <laughs> like. <laughs> Ronda's not dropping the belt out of Survivor Series pay per view yeah. to Shotzi, who barely gets pushed. Like, <laughs> and by the way, let me just add: I don't have the time or energy to even speculate or go into like the. But what if Shotzi did win? Like, the, why are we going to waste our energy? We're not. We're not going to do that to Shotzi. We're not going to do that to Ronda. We're not going to do that to ourselves. Most importantly, but you know. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't even have Mari. I don't know about you, but do you have the energy to speculate about the SmackDown Women's Championship and Ronda? Because I am very much of the mind of I don't care. It maybe she'll vacate. Maybe she'll vacate the championship. She'll just give up. She'll be like, yeah, this is boring for me and for everyone else. Let me just walk away. Maybe that's what we'll get from Ronda. The only speculation is if maybe if Charlotte's not on the women's war games team, then she comes out and and it does a stare down with Rhonda after this match. Like, honestly, like that's literally it because um, Shotzi yeah. did beat Shotzi beat um, Shayna Baszler this week, uh, last week on SmackDown. Uh, but so it was, it was Shotzi versus Shayna. Mm -hmm. uh, Rhonda was out there at ringside, like taunting. And it was almost like a two on one. And then, Raquel Rodriguez came out to kind of help even the playing field and Shotzi was able to get a like a, a dirty win over Shayna. Can so, I just, just say something kind of... about this? Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. Raquel, I don't know if her music is new, but we were talking with Solomon about like they were just like, oh, let's change her from Gonzalez to Rodriguez, which like uh -huh. You can't just throw out her family history and adopt another family. Like Rodriguez uh -huh. is a complete different line. But I, uh, whatever, I have to go back and look at this, but I feel like they, I feel like her music is a little bit more, um, I'll say cultural than it was Oh before. yeah, they, she's had mariachi, it's like the mariachi music. Yeah, but she's I don't that, feel like. But she like mixed, they, they might've mixed it a little bit. Yeah, it sounded a little bit different the last time I listened to it, where I was like, this is a lot. Versus like, I, I think she had gen more generic music at one point too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I just. I'm. Yeah, I've never been able to pinpoint pin, uh, pinpoint hit her um her music at all. I'm a little offended for her a little bit, but we'll get back to it eventually. <laughs> um yeah, I Mari, back to your point though about Charlotte. I think that this could actually be where we see Becky back. That so too, maybe we get yeah. Candace. Let's assume that Charlotte does not show up in the mix, but even if she did show up as part of the women's war games match, like I believe that will be Charlotte or Candace. I could see Becky showing up here to start a story with Rhonda. Yeah. We haven't had that yet since, um, since, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess really since either came back, right? Since they came back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. No, I agree. I would be more interested in that to be quite honest. Totally. Uh, way. And that could, you know, that could start the road to WrestleMania because yeah. Um, if everything stands now, I could definitely see the road to WrestleMania being like Becky versus Ronda, just the two of them style match, or um, Bianca versus Charlotte, because Charlotte's the only horsewoman that um, Bianca hasn't toppled. So, so there's uh, the other, well, and then there's Bailey. Well, at Mania, it's Bailey and. At Mania. Mm -hmm. Bailey and Charlotte, right? Bailey but and Charlotte, yeah. I if that counts yeah. for anything. If that counts, yeah. But Charlotte's the only one that she has not beat, like, period, at all, in anything. Beat her up. Beat her yeah. like a government mule. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I could see that. But they, like I could kind of see any kind of combination though. So like I could definitely see like um Charlotte versus Rhonda, like go back to the their original, original plans, you know, their original plans from three years ago. Oh wait, they already did that at this past WrestleMania. Never mind. Yeah, the, I, okay, I maybe forgot. that's I literally maybe forgot that quickly. Maybe that's why I'm like boring cuz I yeah, know cuz we it saw it twice. Recently. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I totally yeah, forgot. So, I know. Wow. I just don't Never I don't mind. want them I don't want them together the, at all, but yeah. the Becky yeah, thing. So, Becky Ronda would be nice. Just get that over with it. Let's get it over with it. What I whatever think, the I phrase think, is. I think the second thing you just got to think of is again where does Sasha come in if Sasha comes back? Um, Nowhere. Yeah. Maybe so, Sasha doesn't come back. Well, I, you know, I what I told you, I was hoping that we would get uh, Sasha versus Bailey at WrestleMania, which hmm. could still happen. So, will it be Sans mm. title? Should will we get like uh, Bianca and Bianca and um, Charlotte for the title? Becky Becky Ronda for the title, and then like get a Sasha Bailey non title feud or something. Or will we get a Bianca Bailey at Mania, which would be what did I say? Bianca, you said no, Bianca no, you Bailey. Said, no, 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 you didn't say that, but I'm saying that. Like, I wonder if we would get. See, my thing about that is that no, we've obviously can't. seen we've, we've seen, seen it, it so many, many times. times. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. So no, I yeah. I guess you're right about the Charlotte thing potentially. Maybe oh my gosh, I have a vision. Maybe we get Charlotte on the women's war games team, turns on Bianca and her team. Mm-hmm. Like I said, just a pile on the shenanigans. Either she either turns on them or like when they lose, she then turns on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. I, you, you see, we speculated about everything except for this Ronda Shotzi match. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, Brave. so Ronda versus Shazi. Ronda's gonna win. Maybe there might be shenanigans with Shayna and um, Raquel at ringside, maybe to make it a little bit interesting or spicy. But I don't think so. I think it's just gonna be straight up. I think I think Ronda's just gonna tear Shazi's arm out of place here, and it's sure. just uh, we and we move. Like honestly, like <laughs> and that's there it. we go. What a match. Mm -hmm. Yep. What a match. So. There we go. And speaking of matches, there we go. There's a match. AJ Styles, Finn Balor. I did not realize, Mari, that the OC and Dom and Damian Priest are not actually technically on the in card. In the match. Yeah, they're technically not Oof. in the card. So, yeah. and so this is a great picture. So, yeah, so it's just AJ Styles and Finn Balor. That was what was um, the challenge. So, and then, like, we still got Mia and Rhea, too, but, like, I'm really wondering, like, are they gonna be ringside? Like, the women? I feel like the women should not be ringside if they have a War Games match later that night, or if, you know, or if the War Games match is before this. Hmm. It might be better if the War Games match is before this match. And then, like it, it just seems like it's just the men that maybe Rhea comes out and gets sticks her nose in it, and then Mia can come out to be the equalizer. That might be better. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this could also be a source of more shenanigans. It's just I'm all just, shenanigans. Well, because I'm just like, what if it happens before the women's war games match, and then we. Oh. And then one there's something between them. Like one of them gets hurt or like Mia gets like thrown through a table. So then, mm. it, you know, she shows up to war games and she's like, I'm hurt, but I'm going to keep fighting. You know, that would even be a good story mm. from the Mia perspective, just to get her over more for how tough she is. I, that's the one thing 
Um, except, hmm. you know, there's a world where, of course, the women's war games match, like who knows, opens the show. Um, and then right. we just don't have them at ringside. Like, I don't think we would have them at ringside if the women's war games match happens before AJ versus Finn. But I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm it. saying. I think yeah, exactly. I, I think if it opens up, if the women's war game match opens up the opens up the card, um, the you know, Finn and AJ come out. They have their people, the, the men doing shenanigans, it's the match shenanigans, and then all of a sudden Ray Ripley comes out to try and help, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have Mia come out, be all tough, and because no matter yeah. what, like that's they, that's what they're saying, that's what they said. The whole point is like Mia is the the Ray Ripley like problem solver, so like it would be kind of weird if we don't see them involved in that match, even though it makes sense that they shouldn't be if they're, if they're like previously in a match where they're like beating each other's lights out. Like it just doesn't, yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see Agreed. if they play a role in this match, but Finn versus AJ, I think we're going to get a good, like at least like seven minutes of good technical wrestling between the two of them before it devolves into shenanigans. I'm hoping it, I'm hoping, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like I think five... it might just go straight to shenanigan land because <laughs> these people do not like each other. And the men, mm-hmm. men are always in wrestling and otherwise men are always take it from me pulling shenanigans. And I think we're <laughs> going to see some men pulling some shenanigans in this match. I, I mean, mm, I wish I cared more about this match to be honest. <laughs> like it's, we, I mean, AJ yeah, Styles, yeah. icon, Finn Balor, I can't. You know what though? Mm-hmm. Like looking at them, I just don't believe that they hate each other. That's my problem. Mm. Maybe yeah, I, I mean have... they've been brothers for so long. Exactly. Yeah. And then I mean, yeah, like that's the one thing. I like I think the real place where there's heat is Dom. You've talked you have talked about this more than yes. anybody else in the world. Mm-hmm. Like Dom Mysterio, where I mean yes. just even putting him opposite AJ Styles, I think with Finn on the outside or, you know, everyone else around, it just adds another layer to it where everyone's like, what is this kid doing in the, in the, in the ring with AJ Styles? But it'll be yeah, great. Yeah, Dom right? just had a match with somebody, I, I want to say. Probably with AJ but, at some point recently. It, yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah. And he was just getting lights out. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe... Mm-hmm maybe this one-on-one match turns into like a three-on-three or something like that because it's just like this would have been a really good match to do a traditional style elimination war games like this would have been perfect yeah perfect for that again even if you add more people or you don't this would have been perfect for that elimination style match yeah i mean i agree with you the only place where i could see them the reason they didn't do is just that they like the timing of it maybe wasn't all. the best. Well, because I just don't know if the timing of it was the best. So, like, when you bring Edge back, actually, there's this whole. Oh, I have so yeah. many questions because there was the whole Edge Beth Phoenix thing, and we kind of saw them written off. But mm-hmm. I do wonder if we're going to get them back at any point. What does that mean for Mia Yim, aka Michin, um, when? Like, if Beth comes back with Edge, will Beth come back with Edge? I don't know, but I just feel like that's a time where I want to see, like, Edge with the OC and AJ taking on Judgment Day with maybe another man in the mix there. But I think but I think they, I think you're right with the timing. Like, it just doesn't make sense with the timing because I think Edge and, and writing Edge and Beth off for that, in that gruesome of a way, for a long period of time, I think is the the best course of action i think you get edge and beth back maybe for the road to wrestlemania because that's probably maybe you have uh, the final blow off with them (gasps) at like yeah or Mm. royal rumble exactly exactly i just had an idea i had to pick (laughs) this this is like i got really excited um my idea put beth and edge in the what's your idea beth and edge in the men's rumble beth and edge in the men's rumble with Rhea? Rhea in the men's rumble? Like we just we just don't have people in the men's rumble. Uh no, I either way, I just think um yeah, I either way, I just think this this match is definitely gonna end up it's not gonna be one on one. It's gonna be so many shenanigans. And I uh, I feel like 
it's hard because you would think that the you would think that the OC should win. The OC probably should win because they've they've solved their problem. They've been losing a lot, and the the heels do need to get their comeuppance. But you still kind of don't. I still don't want the Judgment Day to lose, <laughs> like I'm like because I just like them better. So it's like, mm. even yeah, though I, they're the heels, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just yeah. don't know. <laughs> That's all. It could go either way, and I don't think I care really which way it goes. It, I don't think it really affects the feud much if it goes either way. I agree. I agree. Uh, but I kind of feel like I do want this feud to be over. And I think that the, there is a path for it to be over. If they end it here, um, the Judgment Day did kind of get into it a little bit with the Brawling Brutes. Um like a few weeks ago. So maybe if that's like the off ramp, it's like Judgment Day, Brawling Brutes after this, but I don't know. Who knows? Um, and for the final match, again, oh, sorry. Did we say our predictions? I, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Finn. I don't think he'll win, but I'm going to pick Finn. I want Finn to win. Uh, I'll go with AJ just because it's the opposite yeah. of that. <laughs> Who cares? Gotcha. Um, but Who it'll cares? be a good, it'll, right. be a great, it'll be a great match, but like that's yeah. not, what we you know we're here for the shenanigans we probably said the word shenanigans like 50 times on this podcast so far who cares um the united states championship match seth rollins who is the current champion versus bobby lashley versus austin theory seth rollins got his like like he bleached his hair again but it's Mm -hmm. like he only bleached like the time i like it i like it it's (laughs) good I do like it, but I think it's funny. It's like you bleach your hair to look like you haven't bleached your hair in like three months. You know Wait, it's, like, it's hilarious because the top of his head, if you just look at that alone, it looks like Austin, the top of Austin Theory's head. But like oh, right. the back of it looks like Edge or like Edge or Dolph Ziggler's hair. Like it's yes. very, it's very like he just decided to mix the two looks into one and he did it all with a bleach job. And you can't yes. blame him. Box dye. Uh, Brad Mondo would not ap- approve of this. Like, <laughs> it, I just think it's funny because it kind of like it, it harkens back to like his old like a- after Shield days, authority days where he he was growing that blonde streak out. And that was like the, the, the menace. The, that was the start of the menace Seth Rollins. Yeah. But it's just funny to me because like if, like, but you started off with blonde, like the blonde patch, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you didn't mm-hmm. dye your hair ha- halfway. So it's kind of funny, but either way, this match, I think has a lot of like heat going into it. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested. I actually really like, I love Seth as, as the champion here, because like we were talking about a few weeks ago, it feels like he can go either way. Like he could, he's the type of champion right now who could face heels or face faces and still mm-hmm. get you to draw a reaction. The Austin theory of it all, whatever. I guess he's like, oh, he's all scary now that he's lost. Oh, wow. Okay. He will be Um, pinned. Because he will be pinned in this match. I'm guaranteed. I think so too. I would guarantee that. Because Bobby Lashley is out for blood. I love that Bobby is out for blood. Um, They had a pretty cool like match on, on Raw this week. Like, very, very like he did and i think you know seth just did an interview they had like a heated brawl on raw i think it's so i think it's gonna be so funny like i wonder if if seth is gonna try and just let them tear each other apart and then he just steals a pin like i could definitely see that being how this this match ends because i i Ooh. think they keep i think they keep the belt on seth here oh, uh, uh... Oh, it's ha- it's hard. It's hard because I like what he's done with it in like a month. But if Bobby pins Austin, that saves Seth. Bobby gets his championship back. He's now a heel. Hopefully, we get hurt business. I'm agreeing with Hopefully. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully we get the hurt business. Uh-huh. Um, and then Seth is free to win the rumble. Face Roman. 
take the belt off of Roman? Mari's got a theory. Mari's got a theory. I mean, I don't know where Cody's at in his recovery. I think if I had to guess who are the two people that have the chance of taking the belt off of Roman, it would be Cody and Seth. Cody or Seth, to me. Yeah. So I, do, I agree. do you free Seth up here? Uh-huh. That's you a... free you free him up in a way that still keeps him um strong. That's a good question. I I mean, I wasn't even thinking about Roman because I don't think that Seth is gonna try to take it from Roman. I mean, a, it was almost a year ago that we saw Seth. Seth taking on Roman at the start of the year for like a very mini feud. They had a moment. Mm -hmm. So they've touched gloves mm -hmm. like for that. A good mini feud. Yes. Very good. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here's what I think. I think Austin Theory is going to get pinned. Now, the question is, will it be mm -hmm. Seth who pins who him? Who does the pinning? <laughs> who does the pinning? Yes. Because it's like, will it be Seth or will it be Bobby? And my thing is, like, I kind of feel like Bobby could get the championship back here because then you have Seth and Austin theory still continuing to feud. They, they clearly have some bad blood. Um, but then you also have Bobby yep. Lashley who could take on Mustafa Ali for that title. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I feel like we might be getting back to Lashley as the champion. It does kind of, and if we do, then it really just signifies like we took off, we took the championship off of him going into crown jewel and just kind of put it back on him leaving it. So mm -hmm. I kind of want Lashley to take this. He's like kind of pissed, you know, he looks like he's, he's heated and um, I wouldn't mind him getting the belt back. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. And that's what I meant. So like it it felt weird that you took the belt off of him for two seconds going into crown jewels so that you could prep this him versus Brock so that because they wanted to pay for it to see that match again. Like, OK, cool. Um, maybe I'm just glad that they did it in a way that Brock didn't have to like carry the title. It's like Brock was like, I'll come back for crown jewel. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll work this this date, but I'm not I don't want the title. So. If, yeah. if that's the case, they, they did do a very ingenious job. It's like they used this one storyline to solve like four problems. To yeah. Me. Does that make sense? Like yeah. they, they're like, we took the belt off of Bobby so that Bobby and, and um Brock <laughs> don't have to face off for a title. We put the belt on Seth for a minute to to thank him for like carrying and doing such a great job and giving him like a little like some hardware to carry around we got austin theory to be a dummy and waste his um his money in the bank uh contract so now we don't got to think about that <laughs> and now bobby lost his title he lost to brock he's pissed off he's no longer the happy united states champion and now he has a new heel turn hopefully he'll get his old faction back and now if he gets the belt back it's like his his title reign was redirected, and then now we can get a heel champion Bobby, like U.S. champion Bobby Lashley, going into the road to WrestleMania. And oh look, look who's there, Mustafa Ali, who he's been bullying for the past few weeks. Yeah. Maybe he'll finally climb the mountain and reach that brash ring by taking the United States Championship away from the mean old Bobby Lashley. Like honestly, if that's how it turns out. <laughs> That, that might be like some low key genius shit that Triple H pulled off. <laughs> like, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. And I would also add that I think that I did say I thought Theory would get pinned. I think either Theory is going to get pinned or he's going to be the reason that Seth gets pinned here because mm. I just don't see it going. Like, and I don't think that he'd be the reason that Bobby gets pinned. I do not. Bobby Lashley is not getting pinned in this match. I would he almost shouldn't. guarantee that. But, you know, honestly, if we're wrong, like that just means that they're thinking Triple H and his people are thinking on a level that we are we cannot. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, prediction wise, I'm going to go with Lashley. I think that's my prediction here. Same, same. I think I want to see I want to see him continue to like flourish in this like heel role here with the with the belt um 
Austin got it. If Austin gets pinned, maybe he goes to the back of the line, try to do that. I'm going to work from the bottom style thing. Um, Seth again gets freed up. He he doesn't get pinned. Maybe we get, maybe we run back like a Seth versus Bobby at Royal Rumble just to like tie up that loose end, or maybe not. Maybe we don't even get that. Um, mm. So I feel like we, I feel like we might get more storylines out of Bobby winning this. Maybe. Or, or maybe we will get Seth. Okay, we get Bobby hurt business. Because here's where my mind's going, Mari. A couple, a few weeks ago, we had Cedric Alexander in a match versus somebody, and then we also had Shelton Benjamin in a match mm -hmm. versus someone else. One yeah. of those was like, I think it was Shelton versus Austin, Austin. Theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember? Maybe Austin Cedric won. faced. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember if Cedric faced. Cedric like, faced Omis, I think, if I oh, remember okay. correctly. So, or I don't know if it was, was him it? or like. I'm Corbin pretty sure it was something. Omis. It was oh, it might have been Corbin. Nope, nope, nope. You're right. It was Corbin. It was Corbin. Okay, so we'll You're see. Right. We'll see if they bring back her business or what. But um, You're I mean, right. I could see a world where we get Theory and Seth teaming together, like un hmm. uh, strange bedfellows or like unlikely allies or whatever. Because it's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So it's like maybe the two of them versus Lashley and the Hurt Business. Who knows? I feel like they're definitely going to team up in this tri triple threat. If they're smart, they'll try and get rid of Lashley in the triple threat. Yeah. Hey. I mean, Either way, I am actually excited about this match. Like, I it's like interesting. Mm hmm. I'm. 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 It is very interesting. I. I like. I want to see how it shakes out. I think. I think for me, the ranking is um, the women's war games match, the men's war games match, uh, Bobby Seth. Uh, yeah. Austin, um, Judgment Day, OC, Shotzi, Ronda. I feel like Judgment Day, OC would be higher mm -hmm. if it was full, like, like full Judgment Day versus OC by instead of just Finn and Finn versus uh, AJ. Yeah, especially in like a war game situation where you have to see Dom prove himself. You have to see like mm -hmm. each of them prove themselves and their worth. Um, and I guess it is a little disappointing that the OC is not officially in a match yet on the card, but yeah. I'm, I think I agree with that. I mean, the only thing is that, I mean, the men's war games will be good. Um, mm -hmm. I would just say like, for me, it's the women's war games is the match I'm most interested in and excited for. And yeah. then, you know, the US championship match is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then I guess the men's war games could come in after that with, uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship just at the bottom of the barrel. Always at the bottom. <laughs> but, you know, but it's sad. And, you know, I think the outcome of that for me in terms of Becky potentially showing up here would be very fire. I think I just made that up. But <laughs> I would be excited if we do get Becky confronting Ronda at the end of that. That would be good. That's a good path for Ronda. That's like where Ronda belongs and a few that I think has some money in it just because of like the history. Right. And can you believe it's been a it's been a year since we you know we went to Survivor Series together. We did and the rock didn't show up, but there was an egg. There was an egg, <laughs> was and an that's egg. when Austin Theory and uh he who shall not be named <clears throat> uh mm -hmm. the, the uh, I don't even want to former CEO, former mm -hmm. CEO, former chairman. Uh mm -hmm. he uh found a love for theory and i'm not gonna say mm -hmm. much more than that because i was i'm not gonna talk about how different people are uh it's questionable <laughs> that's how yeah. i'll keep it light yeah. i'll keep it light but yes so it's been a year and it's so, been a good year you know i like how the year has shifted year. it shifted and this year's event is so much better than that one you know could ever be so i'm hyped definitely I completely agree. So uh, <laughs> that's it for the highlights of the week. Uh, again, every week we bring you the highlights and they can be found in a very handy playlist, either in your show notes or show description. Sorry, this is probably a record for the shortest wrestling wrap up, but 
that's all we got, folks. It's only five matches. Like, there's no intercontinental yeah. match, I think, because the World Cup tournament is still going on. So the semifinals for the World Cup tournament still needs to happen on SmackDown this week. And it is um, Ricochet versus Braun Strowman. And then on the other side, it's it's um, a, a Santos Escobar versus a Butch, which is just... Butch. weird because i mean butch is probably gonna lose that right you get so you, maybe we have butch lose that because maybe the bloodline or something interferes because he why would you want to be in that that match like I don't, I don't know you know what i'm saying like i would wait be in that match. wait 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 because the finals the finals will be when are they on december 2nd for the finals for the work world cup will be on That's December 2nd. Yeah, but then it's for an intercontinental title match later down the line. So now that I think about it, Butch might have to Butch should probably win that. I mean, if cuz if the the end result of this is Pete Dunn versus Pete Butch Dunn versus uh Gunter, like they've had if I remember correctly, they've had good matches in the past. So you might want to they beat each other up. Get the, bow, yeah, bow, you might want to get those bow, two bow. together. But then on the other side, you could see them trying to maybe go Braun Strowman versus Gunther, which no. Who wants you. that? Not me. So either way, either way, I see all that to say. The inter, unfortunately, the Intercontinental Championship matches will not be on this card. So far, we don't have a men's elimination style match or a women's elimination style match. I feel like there's so many storylines going on, like Johnny Gargano and The Miz. Like, I feel like they could have put a team together. Uh, Bray Wyatt is <laughs> and LA Knight getting hurt and stuff like that. There's like a lot of the Viking Raiders returned, weirdly. Yeah. You know, the New Day <laughs> are still out there. Yeah, we, we'll talk about the Viking Raiders at some point. Just mm -hmm. not today. At this point, I just feel like I would I I wish we had more people on the card because five yeah. matches, like how how long is this gonna be? How long are the war games matches usually? Like maybe an hour and a half. Let's just keep it short. Keep the whole show short. Like keep it tight. Let's get it. Right, keep it tight. Done like, by like 9 30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> like like this podcast. Yeah. Like because you're not giving Rhonda and Shotzi like 20 minutes, like you you cannot you could definitely give aj and finn a good 30 if they want to no that's too i mean but yeah like if a good they, 20 they, if they yeah want that's to, what i'm saying yes. but like uh yeah you're right and i, and I mean maybe you can always go pretty long yeah like all of these matches like each of the war games matches easily 30 minutes and aj finn 20 to 30 minutes u.s championship match 20 minutes so yeah, the math's not I feel really like they gotta add. I feel <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I feel like they have to add like a, a few more. Like they could definitely like, add like a few more matches. Get the get this. We're gonna get a 45 minute men's war games match for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> what if we we I didn't we didn't even think what if Liv Morgan is the last person for Team Bianca? Like there's just so many people who could no, be that I, last member. I just want you to know my silence in response to you mentioning that could be live was my answer to that. I'm just mm -hmm. like, well, who cares? I mean, it's it's not that who cares. Like, let's be fair. It's just that the problem is live, she's got a thing going. But it just feels random for her to insert herself into this one. Now yeah, and also does. with with the speculation mm -hmm. of Becky, that's the thing. As wrestling fans, like I think sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot. We get shot in the foot by speculation about who will show up. Like I would be excited about Candice in the mm -hmm. War Games. Live not as much, but either of those things could happen. Um, and then if it's not Becky or Charlotte or Sasha or Naomi, then people are disappointed and. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just sucks that we always, we often find ourselves in the trap of getting disappointed. But I'm hyped for whoever they have in that match. I just don't know if the general wrestling fan base will be. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I hope they add at least one traditional, um, like one traditional match to the card. Like even if it's on a pre-show or something. Like this this match card feels like it feels light. We've we've gone through it. it. It feels okay, but I do think that they could definitely add something to it. Oh, this evening light is. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yes, we love it. Yes, very this very. Uh... <laughs> very audio friendly conversation about Mari's lighting. Yeah. Here. Um, Mari's but, lighting. Yeah. yeah. But oh, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so we are not going to waste any more time. <laughs> We're not no. going to stretch any longer. We, uh, Matt, where can the people find you? Wow. I'm so glad you asked, Mari. I never thought you'd ask. People can find me at Matt Scott GW on the different platforms. Uh, technically, what's it called? Hive? The Hive? Technically, I have, a, uh, I have an account on the Hive as Matt yeah. Scott GW, or is it just called Hive? I don't know. I'm not on hmm, Mastodon yet. I'm still on yeah. Twitter. I'm going to still be on Twitter. That's the best place to find me. Um, though, mm -hmm. you know, you might have to go through some ch -ch changes uh, if Elon screws up anymore. Uh, I was going to say fucks up, but that's not audio friendly for the podcast. So, um, but yeah, so that's going to happen. And so, yeah, you can find me talking about for wrestling podcast, here with yeah. Mari. And you could also find me, um, actually, I don't know. There's not really a lot going on for me lately, um, except I always encourage folks to go back and check out Pod Friends and all the interviews that I've done this year that include Mari, that include many of the fabulous guests that we've had here on the Wrestling Rehab Up over the last couple of years. Mari, it's almost our two-year anniversary. Um, and I also just want to say that, uh, yeah, Pod Friends, Rob has website.com slash Pod Friends feed for more of that. All right, Mari, where can the people find you? So, of course, uh, every week you can find me here on the Wrestling We're Half Up podcast. Uh, but uh, you can also find me every Tuesdays bringing True Crime Tuesdays to RHAP with me and Sarah Carradine. If you haven't already gone and listened, we just dropped like such a powerful episode. Um, we dropped the um, I Am Vanessa Guillen mm. um, uh, review uh, podcast. We had wonderful guests, Marissa Garza and Ariel F on to talk about um, the Netflix documentary, I Am Vanessa Guillen, about Vanessa Guillen, a Fort Hood soldier who was murdered on base. And it's her family's quest to get like the military, um, to get the military uh, punishments moved outside of the chain of command. Because before Vanessa's murder, she had reported to her family that she was sexually harassed. And they think that possibly her murder was committed during an uh, um uh, sexual assault in progress so wow. um you know heavy trigger warning for uh we, we talk about sexual assault in the armed forces which is very rampant um but definitely go check it out it is a such a wonderfully powerful um it's a, a wonderfully powerful documentary in itself. Like definitely go check that out on Netflix, but also the, the podcast was really, really good. So you can go to Rob has a website.com slash crime feed to subscribe to the crime scene podcast. That's crime S E E N. You can follow us on Twitter at crime scene R H A P and on TikTok. We're on TikTok. Um, you can go to TikTok at crime dot S E E N on TikTok, and we we drop like little um clips from our episodes, uh the the uh, talking about the crimes itself. Really, we're having like a little bit of fun over there. We're figuring it out as we go, but definitely go check us out over there as as well. Um, yep, that's it for me too. It's the end of the year. So we're kind of like wrapping it up. I'll be making some appearances, um, yeah. some appearances. So just follow me on Twitter to know where, I, where I'll be on. So follow me on Twitter at Mari talks too much. That's two, like the number two, I will post all of my, um, podcasts on there. So if you want to listen to me, talk more, <laughs> Yeah. follow me on there. Um, yeah. so, so and Mari, 
Mm -hmm. I will say like yep. just a couple of things in terms of some things that are coming up. One thing I didn't plug again, if you go to Rob, his website.com slash YouTube, there is a very fun video of a game slash podcast that I was part of last month with Grace leader, uh, the roll oh. call podcast, uh, the one and only Phil T edited together this great, like, 30 minute video of us playing the game with like confessionals built in very, very fun in my unbiased, humble uh, opinion, actually, sorry, in my humble biased opinion. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's that. And then also speaking of stuff that's coming up for the rest of the year, um, we one I would mention there's something I'm doing on post show recaps with Grace um, that is recapping or kind of looking back at our podcast from earlier in the year over on PSR about the Netflix show Heartstopper and so that's coming up in the next few weeks and yeah just it's like starting to wind down starting to wind down things enjoy the holidays uh, get get uh, I don't know what I'm gonna say get pumped with some turkey. But uh, that's a weird hmm. way to describe it. But yeah, like in full of some turkey, uh, yeah. some gravy, some. Mm -hmm. Ari, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? This is a holiday themed episode, of course. Ham. I'm, I'm like a oh. ham and dressing <laughs> person. Sorry, I had a very strong reaction to that. Um, but <laughs> no, I am not a very much of a turkey person. I have always been a ham person. So yeah, I don't like turkey like page. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like it's never it's never like it's always too it's dry. never moist. It's yeah. Never moist like, enough. Yeah. It's never moist enough. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> that's all I've got. <laughs> yes. Happy happy Thanksgiving to all that celebrate. Yeah, please thanks. again, if you haven't, please go to Rob has a website dot com uh slash wrestling feed to subscribe. Again, you can email us by going to wrestling at Rob has a website dot com. Send us any long term long form questions you may have and of course tweet us at wrestling rehab up that's at wrestling r-h-a-p-u-p -P. um for me and matt scott remember wrestling is for everybody but not all wrestling is for everyone goodbye come up lay it down just like matt amari wrestling liver half up's gonna make it sorry Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party. Mula Rig Flair, huh? Showing out like a young couple Blair, huh? Best podcast, fuck shit in the air, huh? From the rings, and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw em up, lay it down, just like Matt Amari. Wrestling over half up, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party. Who's this, son?